They still hate you. They still hate you. I'm afraid this sort of thing can't be helped, men. Put your arms down when Ellis finishes. We don't want anyone from Fort Neal going into Italian looking for rednecks. May I speak, sir? Why do this, Captain? If he's got us surrounded, and the Colonel must know, no one color killed the man. This is precaution, Cobb. We can't have revenge killing, so we search for weapons. What did they find us, officer? In the woods, out by the junction. And so we don't have any rumors, Sergeant Waters was shot twice. We don't know that he was lynched. Twice. Right in the back. You finished with the foot lockers, Ellis? Yes, sir. There aren't any weapons. I didn't think there would be. Eddies, man! Tech Sergeant Waters, in my opinion, served the 221st in this platoon, in particular with distinction. Not for once you'll miss the man. But no matter what we think of Sergeant Waters' death, we will not allow this incident to make us forget our responsibility to this uniform. We are soldiers in our wars with the Nazis and Japs, not the civilians in Thailand. Any enlisted man found with unauthorized weapons will be immediately subject to summary court-martial. Sergeant Waters' replacement won't be assigned for several weeks. Until that time, you are all to report to Sergeant Dorsey of C Company. Corporal Cobb will be Barracks NCO. Any questions? Uh, who do they think did it, sir? At this time, there are no suspects. You know the Klan did it, sir. Were you an eyewitness soldier? No, but who else went around lynching Negroes in the South? They lynched Jefferson when we got got here in that signal court Daniel two months later. Henson! Unless you saw it, keep your opinions to yourself. Is that clear? And that's an order. It also applies to everybody else. Yes, yes sir. sir! You may have had your details or to report to the orderly, orderly room for your assignments. The rest of you to report to the colonel's quarters. Clean up detail. Gob, I want to see you in my office at 1350 hours. Yes, sir. As of 0600 hours this morning, the town of Tynan is off limits to all military personnel. The Friday night dance has also been canceled. Okay, okay. Some of the officers are going to the colonels. I can't promise anything, but right now, it's canceled. Dig up! As you were. Bookie, they still out there? Yeah, they got the whole place around. I don't know what they thought we were going to town with, mobs and dish rags. <laughs> I hope you new recruits know what the colonel's cleanup detail is. Yeah. Cleaning that horse crap out of his stable. <laughs> Ain't no different from what we've been doing. <laughs> hey, they made you commander in chief, huh? Well, look, man, I hope you don't get like old stone ass. Hey, man, what are you doing? Man, scratching. Taylor knows the plan did it. I hope y'all know that. Then why are those repeats outside with rifles? Why hold us prisoner? Look, they just scared we may kill a couple peck of woods. That's all, Small. Small, you want to play some coon can? <gasps> Hey, Peterson, you know I think Eva gave me crabs? Cobb, the kind of women you find in surprise your stuff ain't fell off. Crabs? You probably got flies, fleas, ticks, bed bugs, tapeworms. <sighs> Shut up, Vincent. Hey, Pete, man, I ain't fooling. Look, man, just get some powder from the PX. Hey, which one of y'all feel like playing me and some cobs? Uh, me and Pete's been going down to the mess hall. You still going, Pete? Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, Wilkie, I thought all you could do was play golf. Yeah, Wilkie. Whose ass you gonna kiss now that your number one ass is dead? <laughs> hey y'all, that sounds like some something CJ was saying. <laughs> hey, hey, this this itch is something terrible, y'all. You know what you can do for me, Henson. You too, <laughs> Peterson. Hey, naughty naughty. I'm the one lost three stripes, and I'm the only man here with a wife and kids. So when the man said jumped, I jumped. Man, don't put your wife and your kid between you and Water's ass. I wanted my stripes back. Oh, man, I'm just gonna sit cold after child, y'all. See, y'all ain't never had nothing. That's why you wouldn't understand a man like me. That was time I was Sergeant Major around here, you know? Yeah. Oh, big girl done slipped out the crabs. Tell me something, Corporal. How you gonna explain that to your girl back home? How will that big, fat mama feel when the only river you bring home from this war is the purple harper crab bite? <laughs> Don't any y'all give a damn. Look, what's the matter, Small? The man's dead. He was alive last night. Yeah, I saw him too. At least I know he died good. And drunk. <laughs> What's the matter with y'all? Man, he got himself lynched. We in the South ain't the damn thing we can do about it. You heard the captain. But don't think like we guilty or something. 
I just hope we get lucky enough to get shipped out this hellhole and off the war. Besides, whoever killed didn't kill much anyway. The man deserves better than that. Oh, come on, Smalls. Everybody feels rotten about it, man, but there's nothing we can do about it. So yeah. just let it go. Yeah, why don't you just walk it off, man? Yeah, go turn the smoke machine. Let the fog make you think you're in London. <laughs> hey, go on and let Carl call his Evo. Gotta take Smalls' man off water. Give him a bonus case of crabs, too. <laughs> yeah, and blue paws and syphilis and piles and cooties and cockeyed tooties. <laughs> call me Davenport. Captain, United States Army. Attached to the 343rd Military Police Corps Unit. Fort Neal, Louisiana. I'm a lawyer that segregated armed forces couldn't find a place for. My job in this war? Policing colored troops. One morning during mid-April 1944, a colored tech sergeant, Vernon C. Waters, assigned to the 221st Chemical Smoke Generating Company, stationed here before transfer to Europe, was brutally shot to death in the wooded section off the New Post Road in the junction of Highway 51 just 200 yards outside of the colored NCO club by a person, or persons, unknown. Naturally, the unofficial consensus was the local Ku Klux Klan, and for that very reason, I was told at the time, Colonel Barton Nivens ordered the military police to surround the enlisted men's quarters. He then instructed his company commanders to initiate a thorough search of all personal property for any guns, knives, or unauthorized weapons of any kind. You see, 90% of the colonel's command, all of the enlisted and stationed here, are Negroes. And the colonel thought, and I suppose justly, that once word of the sergeant's death spread throughout the troops, well, there might be retaliation against the white citizens of time. But the colonel did work. There was no retaliation and no racial incidents. About a week after the killing, correspondents from the Negro press wrote lead articles about it. But the headlines fade. The NAACP got me involved in this. Rumor has it that Thurgood Marshall ordered an immediate investigation into the killing. And the Army, pressured by Secretary of War Stimson, rather randomly ordered Colonel Nivens to conduct a preliminary inquiry into the sergeant's death. Now, the Colonel didn't want to rehash the murder. But he complied with the Army's order by instructing the Provost Marshal, my CEO, Major Hines, to conduct a few question and answer sessions amongst the men of Sergeant Waters platoon to file a report. The matter was to be given the lowest priority. The case was mine five minutes later. It was four to five weeks after his death, the month of May. Captain? <clears throat> uh, forgive me for the occasional staring, Captain Ford. You're the first colored officer I've ever met. Uh, I mean you no offense. Uh, we'll be getting some of you as replacements, uh, but we don't expect them for another month. Uh, uh, sit down, Captain Ford. <clears throat> uh, you came out of uh, Fort Benning in 43? Yes. And they assigned a lawyer to the military police. I'm infantry, and I've been with the uh, Engineers, Field Artillery, and Signal Corps. <laughs> this is some army. Where'd you graduate law school? Howard University. Daddy a rich minister or something? No. Huh. I graduated the point. We didn't have any Negroes at the point. I never saw a Negro till I was 12 or 13. You like the army, I suppose, huh? Captain, have you seen my orders? I saw them right after Colonel Nippon sent them to Major Hines. I had sent my orderly to the barracks and told him to have the men waiting for you. Thank you. I didn't know at the time that Colonel Nippon had sent a Negro to Devonport. My preparations were made in the belief that you'd be a white man. And I think it only fair to tell you, had I known what Nippon intended, I would have asked for the immediate suspension of the investigation. May I speak freely? You haven't stopped yet, Captain. Look, I, I don't mean to insult you, but uh, uh, these people around here, they're, if they see a white man in this parish and it's an investigation conducted by a Negro, uh, they're not going to sentence them. 
The Nibbins and Heinz know that. They're making a fool of you. Can't you see that? Take off those sunglasses. Captain, I intend to follow my orders. And I like these glasses. I like the coffers. <laughs> you go near that sheriff's office in Tynan, in your uniform, carrying a briefcase, looking and sounding white, and you'll be found just as dead as Sergeant Waters. People around here don't respect the color. Oh, I know that. You know how many times I asked Nimmons to look into this? Every day since it happened. Major Hines will tell you that. Did you suspect someone, Captain? Don't play Captain Mouse with me, soldier. Captain, like it or not, I'm all you got. I've been ordered to look into Sergeant Waters' death, and I intend to do exactly that. Can I tell you a little story? Sure. Before you got here? Colonel Nivens had uh, gotten us all together one night after dinner, and all we did was discuss Negroes in the officer ranks. There were a lot of questions that night, and a lot of us had commanded Negro troops, but none of us had come face to face with colored officers. You know, we had questions like, your quarters had to be equal to ours, but we had none, no mess hall for you. Anyway, Jed Harris, he was the only one who defended it. My own feelings were mixed. I, uh, Never saw a Negro uh, until my daddy, uh, he hired the first man I ever met, a man named Colfax, to help with the shed one summer. Nice man, worked hard, did a good job too, but I never met a Negro with any education until I graduated the point. Hardly an officer of equal rank, so I frankly wasn't sure how I'd feel until right now, and I don't want to offend you, but I just cannot get used to it. I mean, the bars, the uniform, being in charge, it doesn't look right on me, bro. Captain, are you through? You can ask the, the colonel for another assignment. This case is not for you. By the time you overcome the obstacles to your, to your race, this case would be dead. Oh, I got it. And I am in charge. The only thing your orders instruct you to do is cooperate. I won't be made a fool of that important. Alice! You're right. There's no need to discuss this any further. <clears throat> yes, sir. Captain Davenport will need assistance with the men. I can't prevent that, Davenport, but I intend to do everything I can to have the so-called investigation stopped. Do what you like. And if there's nothing else, you'll excuse me. Won't you, Captain? Glad I met you, Captain. Hmm? We heard it with you, sir. You know how the grapevine is. Sad thing would happen to Sarge, though. Anything on the grapevine about the killer? We figured the Klan did. Any too fancy about us tan Yanks in this part of the country. Anything on the grapevine about trouble in the town before the Sarge's death? Not that I knew of before. See, after there were rumors around the post. A couple of my, couple of my guys wanted to drive them Shermans in the tie-in. I guess you heard that somebody said the two white officers were involved. I think that's why the colonel had our barracks run it the other night. I didn't hear anything about that. Did anything ever come of it? Was that rumor confirmed? Not that I knew of. Thanks, Ellis. No problem. Well, I guess we better start seeing you. Yes, sir. You set this up? It's pretty good. Are they ready? Captain instructed everybody in Sarge's platoon to be here. Since we're getting started this morning, sir. Before he found out, huh? Sir? No, send in the first man and stay loose. I might need you. Yes. May I say something, sir? Sure. Show sure is good to see one of us in the captain box. Thank you. Private Wilkie. Yes, sir. Captain wants to see you. Yes, indeedy. Private right, James Wilkie, reporting there is order, sir. Have a seat, Private. They'll be off for Private Wilkie, I'm Captain Davenport. Oh, everybody knows that, sir. You all we got down here. I was on first detail, got your quarters together. <laughs> I'm conducting an investigation to the events surrounding Sergeant Waters' death. Everything you say to me will go into my report. That report is confidential. You understand? I understand, sir. All right. How long did you know the sergeant? Uh, about a year, sir. It was uh, March, March 5th. 
I remember the day that I had been staff sergeant exactly two years before Wallace was assigned to this company. See, we was basically a baseball team. Most of the boys had played in the Negro League, so quite naturally the Army, they put us all together. We'd be assigned to different duties all week long. Motor pool, dump truck. <laughs> Gave us the dirty work on the post to do. <laughs> Garbage and clean up. On Saturday, Saturdays, we'd be whipping the hell out of them boys on a baseball dime. <laughs> now, I was hitting 352 myself. We had a boy, CJ Memphis. I mean, he could hit a ball from Fort Neal to Berlin, Germany. Now, Tokyo, if you were batting right handed. But uh, the Army, they, they sent Wallace over to manage the baseball team. He had been in field artillery, a gunnery sergeant. Had a quad together from the first war, too. What kind of man was he? All spitting polish, sir. Hmm. Tell me about it. He took my stripes, and I was in the wrong. Sergeant Wilkie, you are a non-commissioned officer in the army of a country at war. The penalty for being drunk on duty is severe in peacetime. So don't you bring me no poke, because our folks can't do nothing unless they drunk mess is an excuse. You're supposed to be an example to your men. So I'm going to put your butt in jail for 10 days, and I'm going to take them damn stripes. Teach you a lesson. You're the army. Color folks always running off at the mouth talking about what you're going to do if the white man give you a chance. You get it or what you do with it. Wind up drunk on guard duty. I don't blame the white man. Why in the hell they want to put colors and whites together in this war when you can't even trust them to guard your own quarters? No wonder they treat us like dogs. Get out of my sight, private. What about the other men? Some of the southern guys, they called a little hell. Sarge so always said he was from up north somewhere. Now I'm from Detroit myself, born and raised. Sarge, so he was a good man. Joe Lewis got a star in Detroit. Did you know that, Captain? What, what about the southern? Sarge, so he wasn't exactly crazy about him. Except for CJ. Now, CJ, he was from the south, but with him and Sarge, it was different. Probably because CJ was the best ball player we had. He can sing too. I saw he ain't get too close to anybody. Maybe me, but with him and CJ, it wasn't like it was with everybody else, you know. Well, it's a low down, a low down dirty shit. Said it's a low down, a low down. Big old country boy from Mississippi. They say we're fighting him, but won't let us in the game. I mean, worked harder, faster than any other man. What the man on the team didn't like? Sarge took to him the first time he saw him. He looked at him and said to me, Wilkie, what do we have here? A guitar playing man. Who you ever heard of? Vine Willie Reynolds? Mm -hmm. Son, how? Mm -hmm. Henry said? Mm -hmm. You heard them play Sarge? Every one of them. Well, I was stationed down there in Mississippi a couple of years ago. You from down that way, ain't you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, they used to play outside the Bandana Club, right outside Camp J.J. Rock. I played there once. Ain't that something? I used to go there from time to time. People used to come from everywhere. It was always dark, really, smoking. People being there dancing, sweating. Guitar players be struggling, shouting. Wild in there sometimes. Reminded me of a place I used to go to during the first war in France. The women, whiskey, a place called the Cafe Napoleon. Now you really like the blues I saw? No other kind of music. Where'd you learn to play so good? I came back here yesterday and heard this thing. One of the men told me it was you. Well, my daddy taught me, Sarge. Well, you played pretty good, won't you? Wilkie, wasn't that good? Yes, indeed, Sarge. I mostly agree with the Sarge. He was a good man, good to his men. Talked about his wife and kids all the time. Used to write a letter to him every day. I don't see why anybody would have wanted to kill Sarge. Wilkie, you know what I'm gonna get that boy of mine for his birthday? One of them swing bikes. <laughs> He'll be 12 years old. <laughs> time show flies. Let me show you that. <laughs> Now, he was always pulling out snapshots of them. Yeah, more after that, the neighbor take this a couple of weeks ago. 
Ain't he growing fast? Oh, he's almost over your wife's shoulders. Yeah. Time show flies. You know, when this war is over, looking, things are going to be different. Hmm. And I want him to be ready for it. My daughter, too. I'm sending both of them off to some big white college. <laughs> Let him grow up elbows with the whites. Learn the white man's language. See how he does that. Otherwise, we'd be left behind. Now, Sarge, you know, some of us ain't get the same opportunity that some of these white boys got. <laughs> oh, that ain't no excuse, Wilkie. Some niggas just don't care. Tomorrow don't mean nothing to them. Now, my daddy shoveled coal off the back of a wagon all his life. Couldn't read or write, <coughs> but he saw to it that we did. Not having ain't no excuse for not getting it. <laughs> Sarge, you can't get pee from a rock. <laughs> You're just like the rest of them, will you? I thought busting you would teach you something. We gotta challenge this man in his ring. Use his weapons, don't you know that? And we need doctors, lawyers, senators, generals. Stop thinking like a nigga. All I said was that... Is the equipment ready for tomorrow's game? Yeah, I'm good. Well, you can go now, will you? That's an order. Yes, sir. You meet two people sometimes. Cold one minute, warm the next. How did you feel about it? Overall, I guess it was all right. You could always borrow a tent spot off of them if you needed. Hmm. The night that Sergeant Waters was killed, did you see him any time immediately preceding his death? Hmm. Now, I don't know how soon it was before, but. A couple of us was down at the NCO club. Sarge was down there juicing pretty heavy. Did the sergeant drink a lot? More than any other man. Captain, can I ask you a question? Sure. Is it true that when they found Sarge that his insignia and his stripes were still on his uniform? I don't see anything about that in my preliminary report. Why? If they did, something's wrong, man. The clan boys, they don't like to see us in these uniforms. And they usually take the stripes and stuff off before they lynch us. Thank you, Private. That'll be all for now. I may need you later, but that'll be all for now. Yes, sir. Captain, can you do anything about a lot of checks? My, my wife didn't get hers last month. I don't handle that directly. Did you talk to the finance officer? Yes, sir. I'll speak with Captain Taylor about it. Thank you, sir. Shall I send in the next man? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Private First Class Melvin Peterson reporting his orders, sir. Have a seat, Private. You know why I'm here? Uh, yes, sir. All right, then you know that everything you say to me is confidential, so I want you to speak as freely as possible. You understand? Yes, sir. All right. Where are you from? Uh, Hollywood, California. Uh, by way out of balance, sir. I listened in uh, 42. You know, I thought we'd get a chance to fight. Did you know the sergeant well? No, sir. He was already with the company when I got here. You know, us common GIs don't mix well with NCOs. So you were on the team? Oh, uh, yes, sir. I play shortstop. Did you like it, sir? Uh, no, sir. Beg your pardon, sir. Captain Taylor would like to see you in his office at once. Did he say why? Didn't say. Just that you should report to him immediately. All right. Tell the men to stick around. When I'm done with the captain, I'll be back. Yes, sir. Thank you. Feel like walking and talking private? We can continue this on the way. Why didn't you like the sergeant? Well, it uh, goes back to the baseball team, sir. So, you know, the season already started when I got this, so it had to be June. No, June of last year. The team had won maybe nine or ten games in a row, and there was even a rumor that we'd get to play the Yankees in the exhibition. So, I mean, I was excited when I got assigned to a team like this, sir. But anyway, old Stone Ass. Stone Ass? Uh, sergeant Wallace, sir. I'm the only one to call him. Respect is right with me, Private. Oh, no offense, sir, uh, but him and that brown nose and Wilkie, they ran a team like a chain gang, sir. A chain gang. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all see the look on that Empire's face when CJ hit the home run? Man, he turned so pale, I 
Now he's going down the spot. It serves a fat bastard, right? Some of those pictures they were calling strikes, way over my head. Hey, CJ, who was that fine ripper hip thing you was talking to? Oh, speaking of women, I got to write my lady a look. Hey, she looked pretty good to me, CJ. Y'all can listen. Hanson, you ain't had one since a woman had you. <laughs> now, all that girl did was ask me for my autograph. Oh, it looked like she was asking for more than that, CJ. You see them smalls leaning up against the fence, all in the woman's face, breathing heavy. Now, if smalls couldn't see a ground ball in his glove, how the hell could he see CJ over there by the fence? And that ball got lost in the sun. Man, on the ground. Oh, come on, y'all. We beat him nine to one. I'm trying to hear about this girl who had boobs like hell. Man, if I had given that guy what she asked for, she would have gave me some mine, won't. Them big guys lay a bad case of clap on you. Besides, she wasn't with 16. 16? You shouldn't have introduced other Hanson. That's more than speed. <laughs> Yo, check this out. Back home, there was a fella folks used to call Little Jimmy One Leg on account of, well, y'all know. <laughs> Two years ago, a young pretty thing leg clap on Jimmy so bad, he lost the one good leg he had. <laughs> now folks just call him Little. <laughs> that thing talking to me didn't look too clean. Oh, well, dirty and clean, she had them white boys looking. <laughs> Eyes popping out of their okay. sides. It reminded me of that picture we saw last week. The one from the 35th Ordinance. The one everybody kept saying was so good. Oh, yeah. After 12 straight hits, he looked the same way. Yeah. <laughs> it may be funny, y'all, but it was that was last week when me and Pete had duty in the Ordinance Press Hall. That was the same picture that started all the name calls. Man, forget them dudes in Ordinance. Listen to this. Dear Lou. Y'all hear that? The name is Lou. Oh, come on, man. Just read the letter. <laughs> Dear Lewis, you and the boys keep up the good work. All of us here at home are praying for you and inspired in this great cause by you. We know the Nazis and the Japs can't be stopped unless we work together. So tell your buddies to press forward and win this war. All our hope for the future go with you. Lewis, love, Maddie. Woo-hoo! I think I'm in love with the sepia tone Winston Churchill. What kind of letter do you write? I'm not like this. Oh, you get us some ammunition and a bayonet, Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Y'all are a listener with small set. Seem like every time we beat them in baseball, they try to get back at us every way they can. Yeah, it's worth it to me. Just a white girl's superior smiles off their faces. Well, nah, it seemed like it make it that much harder for them. Well, they tell me a couple of them big time Negroes trying to get us all together. You know, colored and white. They say they want one army. <laughs> white folks ain't gonna let us integrate no army, CJ. <laughs> well, if they do, I'm gonna be ready for them. Check this out. Okay. Well, I got your red zoo too. Uh oh, come on. Like you have to say, ain't worth me paying attention to now, is it? <laughs> is it? I reckon not, Sarge. You know what? You're a creep, Wasp. Hmm. Boy, you a something. 
ain't even been a couple of months yet. Whooping already, everybody's champion. Sasha's was just joking, Phoebe. He don't mean no harm. Look, he does. Look, we take enough from the white boys. Yes, you do. And if it wasn't for you southern niggas always yes a bossing and scratching your heads, white folks wouldn't think we was all fools. And where you from, England? <laughs> Peterson! You got something to say, Hanson? Nothing, sorry. <laughs> Peterson, you got a real comic streak in you. Well, looks like you got us a wise-ass Alabama boy here. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Don't get smart, nigga. Wait a minute, man. Get your damn hands off of me. <laughs> you want to hear old Captain Water's door? Come on. Please. Come on, nigga. Oh, Jim Hutt! At ease, man. <clears throat> What's going on here, Sergeant? Nothing, sir. We were just going over the manual arms. Was there something particular you needed, sir? Something I could do? Uh, nothing. Men, I congratulate you on the game you played today. We've only got seven more to play, and if we win them, we'll be the first team in Fort Neal history to play the Yanks in exhibition. The entire regiment is counting on you. In times like these, Winning can help a lot of things, because morale is important. Sergeant, as far as I'm concerned, they've got the rest of the day off. <laughs> oh, woo! Well, thank you, boss, sir. But, um, these men need all the work they can get. And they don't need no time off. Now, our boys over in North Africa aren't getting any time off. And besides, we got orders to be in front of the officer's club at 1300 hours for a pay detail. And who issued that order? Well, Major Harris, sir. I'll speak to the Major. Well, sir, I don't think it's such a good idea to get a colored NCO mixed up with you officers, sir. I said I'd speak to him, Sergeant. Yes, sir. I respect the men's duty to service, but they need some time off. Yes, sir. <laughs> Man, you played a great game of baseball out there. And that catch you made out in center field, Memphis, how the hell did you get up so high? <laughs> well, sir, they say I got bird in my blood, sir. <laughs> American Eagle, I hope. <laughs> no, sir. Crow. Man told my daddy the day I was born, the shadow with a crow's wing. I'm a fine, fine. fine. <laughs> Men, I'll say it again. You played superbly. Sergeant! Jim Hutt! As you were. Ain't you peachy, son? How long of a story you gonna tell a man, CJ? My God! Peterson! I ain't forgot about you, boy. It's time to teach you a lesson. Why don't you just drop dead, Sarge? Oh, no, I will drop you out behind the fence. We'll keep going out there and get everything set up. You want all the NCOs? Yes. I'm gonna go outside and wait on you, get you. When you come out, I'm gonna beat your black southern butt and teach you a lesson. You need to learn some respect, boy. I can talk to you better. <coughs> Fight hard here, because I'm gonna try and bust your head open. The rest of you, get them damn shirts off, like I said. So you gonna fight him? I tried to warn you. Look, man, y'all ain't do nothing. Don't fight him, Pete. He'll, he'll, don't do it. He'll fight you dirty. Oh, oh, oh. So you really? don't want to fight him? Look, you want to fight in my place, Kyle? <laughs> I, I got some farmers, guys. Just a pinch of this to make you strong as a bull. They say it comes from the city's art. I seen a man use this once. He pulled a mule out of a sinkhole by himself. Look, man, if you don't get out of my face with all that backwater crap, <laughs> look, man, what's wrong with you? Why can't you take up for yourself? I mean, you let the man treat you like a dog. As long as he ain't put his hands on me, he ain't done me no harm. And calling names ain't nothing. I knows what I is. Sergeant Waters ain't so bad. He been good to me. Man, the man despises you. Sarge? You wrong. Besides, I feel kind of sorry for him. Any man who don't know where he belongs, got to be in a whole lot of pain. Man, look, don't y'all care. Don't nobody like it, Pete. But I mean, once you hear a little while longer, what can you do? This is the army. The Sarge got all the stripes. Look, Pete, if you want me to, I'll go get the captain. You don't have to do this. There's no point in you getting your head beat in. Look, somebody's got to fight. We've been fighting in this here army. It ain't even nothing again. You know, he, uh, he beat me pretty bad that day, son. The man was crazy. Was the incident ever reported? Uh, no, sir. I never reported it. I mean, I know I should have, but I mean, he left me alone after that. So I just played ball. Did you see the sergeant the night he died? Uh, no, sir. You know, me and Smalls, we had God. Thank you, Brian. By the way, 
Did the team ever play the Yankees? Uh, no, sir. You know, we lost the last game to a sanitation company. I asked you back here because I wanted you to see the request I sent to Colonel Nivens to have your investigation terminated. What? I wanted you to see the request had nothing to do with you personally and will not affect your army record in any way. There are other things to consider in this case. Only the color of my skin, Captain. I want the person who killed my sergeant found in jail, Davenport. So do I. Then give this up. Whites down here won't see their duty or justice, they'll see you. And once they do, the law due process, it all goes. Then what is the point of continuing an investigation they can't possibly get at the truth? Captain, my orders are very specific. So unless you want charges brought up against you for interfering with a criminal investigation, stay the hell out of my way and leave me and my case alone. <laughs> Don't take yourself too seriously, Davenport. You could find an officer within 500 miles to convey charges to a court-martial board against me for something like that, and you know it. Maybe not. But I, I'd see to it that your name, rank, and duty station got put in the Negro press. That's right. Let the colored newspapers call you a Negro here. Make you an embarrassment to the Army, like Major Albright at Fort Jefferson. You'd never command troops again, and you'd never see more than those captain's bars on that uniform of yours, Mr. West Point. I'll never be more than a captain, Davenport, because I won't let them get away with dismissing things like Waters' and death. I've been the commanding officer of three outfits. I raised hell on all of them. So threatening me with something like that won't change my request. Let the Negro press print that I don't like being made a fool of with phony investigations. There were two white officers involved in this, weren't there, Captain? I want them in jail, out of the Army, and there's no way you can get them jailed, court-martialed, or put away. The white officers on this post won't let you. They won't let me. Why didn't you report it? I checked my summary on the way over here, Captain. Nothing. You think I'm going to let you get away with something like that? Why? I couldn't prove the men in question had anything to do with it. Why? Didn't you report it? I was ordered not to. Nivens and Hines. The doctors took two forty-five caliber bullets out of Waters that morning. Army issue. But remember what it was like that morning? If these men had thought a white officer had killed Waters, there would have been a slaughter. Anyway, Cobb reported the incident innocently the night before, then suddenly it was all over the fort. Who were they, Captain? I want their names. Bird and Wilcox. Bird's an ordinance and Wilcox is with the 12th Hospital Group. At about 2100 hours, Cobb came in, into my office and said he had just seen Waters and two white officers fighting outside the colored NCO club. I called your office and when I couldn't find uh, anyone, I headed over myself. And when I got there, no, uh, no officers. No waters. I then checked the officer's bill and found that Bird and Wilcox were in bed by 21.30. Well, I told Cobb to go back to the barracks and forget about it. What made you do that? At the time, there wasn't any reason to think anything was wrong. Waters wasn't found until the next morning. I told the colonel what had happened and about the doctor's report, and I was told, since the situation at the fort was potentially dangerous, to keep my mouth shut until it blew over. Now. The colonel let me question Burton Wilcox, but I've asked for a follow-up investigation every day since it happened. And when I saw you, I exploded. It was like he was laughing at me. So, you never believed it was the claim? No. Now, do you see why this investigation needs someone else? What'd they tell you, Burton Wilcox? They're not going to let you charge those two men. Tell me what they told you. They were coming off a bit whack. I saw them outside the club. If it ain't the white boy. It wasn't like we were looking for trouble. What were we Wilcox? White boy is all starched and stiff. Want to hear everybody learn all that symphony mess. At least that's what you were talking in France. And I listened to <laughs> Am I all right now? Am I? Boy, you better straighten up and salute when you've seen, officer. You'll find yourself without those stripes. Will you look at this nigger? 
Come, Lieutenant Sergeant, that's an order. Now, stop. I ain't standing up for y'all no more. I ain't doing nothing. White folks saying do no more. No more, no more, no more, no more. No more. And what do you think, Wilcox? He did appear to be intoxicated, surrounded his mind almost. No. Bird, listen. Was there anyone else in the area? No, no. but I asked them what they did next. Told that nigga to shut up. No. Listen, follow me behind y'all. Look what I've done to me. I hate myself. Don't blame us, boy. God made you black, not me. My daddy has Sergeant, get hold of yourself. Listen. If you know that, nigga. Daddy said, don't talk like that. Talk like this. Don't live here, live there. I killed for you, and nothing changed. Needs to be taught a lesson, Get your hands off me. Get your hands off me. Let me see. Can't you see, sick? See? Nothing changed. I should bust this black dress as Brock Private. I should blow his coward's head in. There are good men killed for you, nigga! Get the guts so I'm going to hell for you! Did they shove Sergeant Waters again? No, but Bird's got a history of scrapes with Negroes. They left Waters at about... 2110, and they're in bed by 2130, and several of the officers verify they're at, they were there all night. Bird had duty the next morning, and Wilcox had to report to the hospital at 0500 hours, and both men reported for duty. I don't believe it. I couldn't shake their stories. That's no more than officers lying to protect you with their own, and you know it. I'm going to charge the cat and arrest them. And you can consider yourself in final quarters pending my charges against you. What charges? It was your job to go over Niven's head to hat to. Are you going to arrest Colonel Nivens too? Because he's part of their alibi. He was there when they came in, played poker from 2100 to 0300 hours the next morning. The Colonel, your Major Hines, Shaq Callahan, Major Callahan, and Jen Harrison. Jen wouldn't lie for either of them. They're all lying. Well, prove it, Hotshot. I told you everything I know. Now you go out and prove it. Oh, I will, Captain. Can bet your sweet ass on that. I will. During May of '44, Allies were making final preparations for the invasion of Europe. <laughs> invasion. Just the sound of it made Negroes think we'd be in it. Get swept into Europe in a wave of men and equipment. I know I felt it. We hadn't seen much action except for North Africa and Sicily. Word in the orderly rooms that spring was, soon we'd be seeing combat. Somebody said, I wanted to see if the colored boys could fight. Man, we've been fighting right here, all along, in these small southern towns. I don't have the authority to arrest a white private without a white officer present. And then I get handed a case like this? <laughs> there was no way I wasn't going to see it through to the end. And after 24 hours, I wasn't doing too bad. I had two prime suspects, motive and opportunity. I convinced Colonel Nivens that word of Bird and Wilcox's involvement could not be kept secret any longer. However, before the press could accuse him of complicity, I would silence all suspicion by pursuing the case open on his orders. Yes, sir, Colonel. Can even send along the White Office, not Captain Taylor, though. It's a little too close to the case. Colonel Nivens had given me permission to question Bird and Wilcox. And having succeeded so easily, I decided to spend a little more time finding out about C.J. Memphis and Sergeant Waters. Somehow the real drama seemed to be there. My curiosity, well, it wouldn't allow me to ignore it. Have a seat, Brian. You're Lewis Henson, correct? Yes, sir. Tell me what you know <coughs> about C.J. Memphis and Sergeant Watts. Something wrong? No, just surprised you knew about it. Why? Because you're an officer. And? 
Well, officers up here, and us enlisted men are down here. CJ and Waters, that was between enlisted men. But I guess ain't nothing a secret between colored folks. Not that it was a secret, there just ain't much to tell. Sergeant like CJ, when I got to the company mail last year, the first person I saw Sarge shoot out was CJ. Go on. Is that an order, sir? Does it have to be? Well, I don't like tattletale, and I don't mean no offense. I ain't too crazy about talking to no officer, colored or white. It's an order, Henson. <laughs> CJ wasn't moving fast enough for him. Said he didn't have enough fire to his behind out on the field. You were on the team? Pitching. He just stayed on CJ all the time. Every little thing it seemed like. And then the shooting went down, and CJ caught all the hell. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What shooting? The shooting at Williams Golden Palace. Here last year, toward the end of the baseball season, way before you got here. A bunch of gunshots went off in the barracks. I had gotten drunk over at the enlistment's club, so when I got back to the barracks, I just sat down in the stupor. What is going on? Man, don't think no more man needs to sleep. Huh? What is it? Are you, are you sure you saw someone? Yes, sir. What did you do? I sat. I was juiced. The gunshots weren't any of my business, plus I wasn't sure what I had seen. And then out of nowhere, Sergeant Waters, he came in. Alright, everybody up! Everybody up! Wake up, Wilkie! Alright, let's go! Everybody up! Up, up! Let's go! Up! and now three soldiers are dead. Two coloreds and one white MP. Now the black man who shot the MP, then the white boy starts shooting everybody. That's how two of ours got shot. Now this low down nigga we looking for got chased down here and was almost caught too until somebody in this barracks started shooting at them and chasing them. Now we got us a vicious murder piece of black trash in here somewhere and the men who helped them. So if any of y'all got anything to do with it, I want you to step forward right now. So all you baseball niggas are innocent, huh? Alright. Wilkie, make the search. Eyes front. Hey, now wait a minute, I don't want that creep in my stuff. You don't talk at attention. I hope it is some of you geeches. Written some of these. Anything yet? Nah. Memphis, you got anything to do with this? No, sir. How many are you out tonight? Uh, I was at Williams earlier, got a pack of Lucky Strikes, uh, round seven. Back and call home, though. Oh, was there. This morning. Didn't I say the night, did you? Mm. Got something. <laughs> Where'd you find it? No, nah, man. Mm. CJ, this your? Uh, no, sir. It's still warm. What's it doing under your bunk? Anybody could have put it there. Who? Oh. Oh. So this gun just crawled in through the open window, huh? Mm -hmm. Looked around the whole room. Past cars bunking beside to snuggle up under yours, huh? <laughs> Must be some of that voodoo, huh, boy? Hmm. Or some of that farmer's dust from around that neck of yours, huh? That pistol ain't mine. Light! Uh, no, sir. I, I hate guns. It made me feel bad to even see a gun. You under arrest. Wilkie, escort this man to the stockade. Hey man, now wait a minute. Now you know CJ couldn't hurt a fly. I found a gun, soldier. Now you better get the hell out of my way. Look, tell me why did you know it ain't him? And how do I know? Before you came in, I knew I saw somebody sneak in. You were drunk when you left the club. I saw you myself. And how you know it wasn't CJ anyway? I was here all night. CJ didn't go out. No, we got the right man. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's innocent, don't you? C.J. Memphis playing cotton picker, singing the blues, smiling at everybody's faces. This man undermined us. You and me both. The description of the man who did the shooting fits C.J. You saw C.J. sneaking here. Don't be fooled. That Yasser boss is hiding something. Niggas ain't like that today. It's 1943. He shot that white boy. C.J. Boy, what you going to do now? Hit a non-commissioned officer? Hey, he didn't mean it, so Shut I up. Get him out of here, Wilbur. Come on. I 
nigga like that, can't have no mouth. Hey man, CJ was here all week. I mean, it's waters. Can't y'all see that? I mean, I've seen this kind of before. We had him in Alabama. I mean, white man give him a low level job as a servant close to the big house. An old copycat nigga went up. Last thing looking, he get to acting like he the new one. Shouting and ordering people around. And you know, arresting CJ, that'll just give him another strike. You know, he think the high gel is like that. I mean, next time be you or you. You know, he can't get nowhere unless he's standing on you. Last, we told him CJ was in all evening. He ain't even listen. Look at what I've done, Captain Boss. You know, they only let him in the army because they know he'll do anything they tell him. You know what? I've seen this kind before. Somebody will kill him. I heard they shot a sergeant in Fort Robinson. A recruit did. I love sergeant making through a whole war without a scratch. You know what? I'm going to the stockade and tell the MPs what I know. CJ was in all week. Nah, I'm coming with you. Me too, I guess. <laughs> Are you sure that the person you saw stayed in? I mean, could, could they have gone out of there? Yes, sir. And Wilkie, he was the only one out that night. I guess so. He came in with walks. And Peterson did all the talk? As I recall, it was a long time ago, and that was you, sir. Ellis! Yes, sir. Have PFC Peterson and Private Wilkie report to me immediately. I think they're probably on work detail. Find them. Yes, sir. Is there anything else, sir? No. Send in the next man. Have a seat, Corporal. Let's get something straight. I don't care if you like officers or not. Is that clear? Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry, Corporal. Have a seat. <laughs> How long did you know Sergeant Watts? Uh, I know him about as well as the next man. I was already with the team when he took over. Me and CJ joined the team at the same time. Oh, you and CJ were close. <laughs> yes, sir. We're homies, sir. Both from Mississippi. CJ from Carmella. I'm up from Ralph Juddleville, what they call Snake County. Plus, we both played for the Negro League before the war. Okay. How did you feel about Memphis' arrest? Terror. CJ didn't kill nobody, sir. Well, he struck Sergeant Wallace. Why does made him, sir? I called that boy things he had never heard before. CJ was so confused, he didn't know what else to do. Then when they put him in that stockade, he just seemed to go to pieces. See, even though CJ's daddy played music, we both grew up on farms. CJ loved those wide open spaces. And that cell, no good for him. I went to see him. The second day he was in there, he looked pale and ashy, sir. Like something dead. It's hard to breathe in these little spaces, Carl. Man wasn't made for this here. Nothing was. I don't think I'll see another animal again and not feel sorry for it. I'd rather be in the chain gang. Oh, come on, homie. I don't think I'm coming out of here, Carl. It feels like I'm going crazy. I can't walk around, can't see the sun. I tried singing, but nothing won't come out. I sure don't want to die in this jail. Oh, come on, CJ. Nobody's going to die, man. Yesterday, I lost a guitar string. Uh, I lost my farmer's dust. I got nothing to protect me. Nothing to keep the dog from tearing at my bones. Oh, come on, CJ, stop. Stop talking crazy, man. You know he come up here last night. Sergeant Watts. You should learn never hit sergeants, boy. Man, getting a lot of trouble doing what you did doing wartime. They talking about giving you five years. They call what you did mutiny in the Navy. Mutiny, boy. But that pistol ain't mine! <laughs> we know that, CJ. That gun belonged to the nigga did the shooting over at Powers Place. Then Wookie found him hiding in the motor pool and he confessed his head off. 
you were here for striking the superior officer, boy. And I got a barracks full of your friends to prove it. Memphis was never charged with the murder? No, sir. But don't feel too bad, boy. It ain't your fault entirely. It has to be this way. You see, that first part didn't change much for it, but this one here, no, this is going to change a lot of that. You can't hide from no it. See, that used to be a time when we see somebody like you, funny, you yeah, asked the boss, and we wouldn't do anything. Folks like that, you were a good, holy kind of nigga. They needed somebody to mistreat, call a name. So they paraded you because it made them feel like the good old days. Cornbread bacon, hams and green cooking. Daddy out in the field picking cotton. Grandma is sitting on the front porch smoking a pipe. Hmm, not no more. The day of the Geech is gone, boy. Only thing we this race for is power. That's the only thing the right respects. And you, you just make us all seem like fools. And we can't let nobody go on believing that we all like you. You bring us down, boy. Make people think the whole race is unfit. <laughs> Took me a long time to get you, but I got you. And I try to get rid of you wherever I go. I put two geeches in jail in Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Three at Fort Aucha. Now I got you. One less food for the race to be ashamed of. And I'm going to get that old boy cop next. You? Yes, sir. Go on. Could you imagine anybody saying that? I know I'm not getting out of here, cop. Uh, Remember that place I told you about outside of Carmela that I used to go to? When I was with a little tiny thing, placed right behind old Connor's farm. It would be stinking with palms. Shit, if that smell would weave through the cotton fields and go out into the town on a warm summer day. The first time I had Evelyn, I had her under them plum trees. And I wrote her a song. My ginger colored mama, with thighs the size of hams. And old mama, when you spread them, you give me jelly rolls and jam. O'Connell had a dog. It was the meanest dog I ever did see. And the only way to enjoy those plums was to outsmart that dog. And Sergeant Waters is like that dog. You gotta run circles around old Wendy. That was his name. They say he tore a man's arm off once and got to liking it. So you have to cheat that dog out of biting you every time. Every time. It's like he wouldn't make sense, sir. I tried talking about everything. The war, the team. It's like he just got worse. What happened to him? Well, the day after, I went to see him. CJ hung himself, sir. Suicide. And he's found him hanging from the bars. What happened next? We lost our game. Well, we threw it for CJ. Captain was mad we didn't get a chance to play the Yankees. Peterson was right on that one. But somebody had to protest that man. What did Waters do? Well, after we lost, they pretty much broke up the team and reassigned everybody to the smokehouse. Waters started drinking, stayed drunk, started talking to himself. Did you really think you were next? I'm not sure I believe what CJ said, sir. He wasn't in his right mind, or he wouldn't have killed himself. After CJ died, Sarge never came in. The night Sergeant Waters died, what time did you get in? I want to say between 21.20 and 9.30. And you didn't go back out? No, sir. Me and Henson listened to the radio until Abbott and Costello went off. And then I played checkers with Wilkie for about an hour. And we went to bed. Who were the last men in that night? Smalls and Peterson. They had guard duty. Thank you, Carl. You surprised me, Davenport. I just left Colonel Nibbins. He's giving you permission to question Byrne Wilcox? 
How do you manage that? You threaten them with an article in the Chicago Defender, I suppose? I convinced the colonel that it was in his best interest to allow it. Really? And uh, did he tell you I would assist you? I told him I especially didn't want you. <laughs> That's precisely why he sent me. He didn't want you thinking you could get your way entirely. <laughs> Not with him. And then neither Bert or Wilcox would submit to it without a white officer present. That's how it is. But uh, there's something else that important. He wants me with you because uh, he doesn't want Bert and Wilcox giving you the wrong impression. He never elaborated on what he meant by the wrong impression. I want to be there. Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You're not on that side anymore. Now you're on my side, right? I want whoever killed my sergeant. Yeah. That's a bunch of bull. No, no, no way. Besides, you don't really give that much of a damn about your man. I, I've been around you a full day, and you haven't uttered a word that lets me know that you had any more than a minor acquaintance with Sergeant Waters. He was an NCO in your company, managed your baseball team. You haven't uttered a word that lets me know that what the man was like as far as being a soldier, sergeant, platoon leader. Who the hell was he? He was one of my men. On my roster, someone these bars make me responsible for. And no, I didn't know a hell of a lot about them or where they come from or a lot of their names. But I'm still their commanding officer. And in a little, little while, I'll have to trust them with my life. And I want them to know that they can trust me with theirs, here and now. That bird and Wilcox in the office. How come you didn't tell Mittens that you placed me under arrest? I didn't find it necessary. What do you know about C.J. Mittens? Uh, he was a big man, as I remember. More of a boy than a man. He played the guitar at the, uh, at the NCO club. But uh, there was something embarrassing about him. He uh, committed suicide in the stockade. I got a center fielder, though. I got a Did you investigate his crime? I mean, the charges against him? Yeah, he, uh, he was accused of uh, assaulting a non-commissioned officer. I questioned him. He didn't say much, uh, but he admitted he struck waters. I questioned several of the other men, but he killed himself before I could finish. Open and shut case. You know, I, I really think Waters may have tricked CJ into assaulting him. Uh, waters wasn't that kind of a man. He may have provoked the boy. He, uh, he accused him of that Golden Palace shooting. But listen, Waters didn't have more than a fifth grade education. He wasn't a schemer. Besides, colored soldiers aren't devious like that. What do you mean we aren't devious? Well, you're not as devious. Anyway, what does that have to do with this? <clears throat> this is Captain Davenport. You've both been instructed by Nivens to give the captain your full cooperation. Tell me you're some sort of lawyer, huh? I'm not here to answer your questions, Lieutenant. And it's Captain Davenport. That clear? Captain, is he crazy? You've got your orders. Sir, I vigorously protest as an officer. Do you this answer his questions the way he wants you to, Bird, or I'll have your ass in the sling so tight you won't be able to pee, soldier. When did you last see Sergeant Wallace? The night he was killed. But I didn't kill him. Should have blown his head off the way he spoke to me, Captain Wilcox, here. What did he say to you, Captain? Well, he was very drunk, and he said a lot of things he shouldn't have. I told the lieutenant here not to make matters worse, and he agreed, and we left the sergeant on his knees, wallowing in self-pity. What exactly did he say? Some rather unpleasant things about us. Uh, white people, sir. Things like what? He said I wasn't going to obey no white man's orders. And then me and Wilcox, he would have blamed for him being black, and ain't able to sleep or keep his food down. And I didn't even know the man. Never even <coughs> spoke to him before that night. Anything else? Well, it said he'd killed somebody. Did he say who? Did he mention a name? Not that I recall, sir. <coughs> no. Look, the goddamn Negro was disrespectful. He would salute, wouldn't come to attention. And where I come from, Kurt don't talk the way he spoke to us. Not to white people, they don't. Is that why you killed I killed nobody. I said where I come from, didn't I? Be dead yourself where I come from, but I didn't kill the the Negro. But you hit him, didn't you? I knocked him down. And when you went to look at him, he was dead. What? He was alive when we you left. You're a liar! You beat up Waters, you went back and you shot him! No! If I don't get out of my face, I'm gonna kill you! Like you kill Waters? No! Soldier! He's trying to pin it on me! You answer his questions, Lieutenant! 
tell it, now sit down! <coughs> you were coming out the bivouac, correct? Yes. So you had weapons. So what? We didn't fire them. When the weapons turned in immediately? Yes, sir. Colonel Livens took our 45s to Major Hines. The colonel wanted it kept quiet because he didn't want anyone colored to know that anyone white from the fort was involved in any way. Ballistics cleared them. We can check. Go ahead. I don't believe that. Why wasn't I told? The weapons had cleared, and the colonel felt if he involved you any further, you'd take the matter to Washington, and there'd be a scandal about colored and white soldiers. As it turns out, he thinks you took the matter to Washington anyway. Captain, I'd like to say that neither myself nor Lieutenant Byrd had anything to do with Sergeant Waters' death. I swear that as an officer and a gentleman. He was on the ground when we left him, but very much alive. Well, consider yourselves under arrest, gentlemen. On what charge? Murder! You think I believe that kind of crap? Let them go, Captain. You got a motive, a witness that they're being at the scene? Let them go. This is still my investigation. You two are dismissed. Are we being charged, sir? Not by me. Thank you. And expect more from a white man, Captain. Get out of here before I have you cashier down with the army, Bird. What the hell is the matter with you? You can charge both of them. Bird for insubordination, Wilcox for tampering with you. The other charge is murder, Captain. <laughs> You think Wilcox would come in here with a statement like that if Pines and Nivens weren't going to back it up? They've got a report. So what do you do now? Finish the investigation. Uh, they're lying, damn it! So is the Colonel! You were instructed to charge the men responsible for this thing, so charge them! I'll back you up! I'm not satisfied yet, Captain. I am! Damn it! I wish they'd send somebody else! Are you... you... you're afraid! You thought it'd be sick. The clan, didn't you? And that'd be the end of it. Another story of midnight riders for your Negro press. And now it's officers, white men in the army, and it's too much for you. Oh, what will happen when Captain Davenport comes up for promotion to major and he accuses officers, right? I'm not afraid of white men, Captain. Then why won't you arrest them? Because I do what the facts tell me, not you. You don't know what a fact is, Davenport. I beg your pardon, sir. What is it, Corporal? Captain Davenport. What is it? Captain, we located uh, Private, Private Wolf. Still haven't located PFC Peterson yet. Seems that him and Smalls went out on a work detail together, neither one of them have shown up. But I had a couple of my men searching around for him inside the NCO club and around the PX Hmm. Thank you. Where's Wolf? Located inside the barracks, Captain. Question Wilkie and Peterson yesterday? Have me. Don't you ignore me. Get off my back. What I do, how I do it, and who I interrogate is my business, Captain. Mine. This entire investigation is mine, Captain. Mine. Don't treat me with that kind of contempt, soldier. I'm not some redneck cracker. And I'm not your yes sir and colored boy either. Then answer my question. I don't have to. Indeed you don't, Captain. Now, Captain, what if Bird and Wilcox are telling the truth? Neither one of us believes that. But what if they are? Then who killed the goddamn man? I don't know yet. Is there anything else? No, Hotshot. No. When did you lose your stripes? Uh, a couple of months before they broke up the team, Captain. Right before Wilders was assigned here, sir. Nervous looking? I know, sir. I just couldn't figure out why you wanted to see me again, sir. You lost your stripes for being drunk on guard, didn't you? Yes, sir. Sergeant Wilders busted you, right? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. How must that I mean, that must have been awful. How must that have felt? I mean, you and the sergeant were friends, right? Didn't you say he was all right? Nice guy? Yes, sir. Would a nice guy get a friend busted? No, sir. And you lied when you said he was a nice guy, didn't you? No, sir. Speak up now. Was the sergeant a nice guy or not? No, sir. I'm, I'm, Why not? I, 
I mean, you wouldn't turn somebody in not over something like that. You're not a good friend, right? No, I mean, I mean, the friend you would maybe call him a bunch of names. I give him extra duty, but three stripes. Damn, it took me ten years to get them stripes in this army. I started off in the 24th infantry. Made you mad, didn't it? Yeah, it made me mad. I all that I had done for him. I That's right. You were his assistant, weren't you? Uh-huh, you took care of the team, ran his errands, policed his quarters, looked at his family snapshots, put that gun under CJ's bed. No, sir! No, sir! Hell no! Uh -huh. No, sir! It was you, Henson, so what? No, you sir! You're Cap a liar! You lied about no, Captain John Waters and you're lying right now! Cap you were the only one out of the barracks that night! Cap and you no, were the only one who no, knew sir. the layout well enough to no, go straight to CJ's book! Now, no, even sir. Waters who don't think that will, Henson no, didn't know who he saw, Cap but he knew exactly what that person did. Oh, no, he was positive of that! Cap you were the only person that knew the barracks in the dark! It was Waters. It was Waters, Captain. He ordered me to do it. Promise me I'd get my stripes back. I want to scare that boy CJ. Let him stew in jail for a few days. Then it backfired on him. Boy killed himself. Rodgers ain't playing on that. Why did he pick Memphis? He despised that man, Captain. He had it underneath on account that everybody loved that boy so much, but underneath it was a crazy hate. He go cold just talking about that boy. Feel it. He the kind of boy that seen me as well. Got everybody around the post thinking he's a strong black buck because he hits on runs. White boy is in his strength, his speed, the power in his swag. Then this color champion let those same white boys call him Shine or Sambo at the office club. They laugh at his blues songs and he just smiles. Can't talk, barely read or write his own name, and don't care. He'll tell you they like him. Or that color folks ain't supposed to have of so much sense. You know how much damage one ignorant Negro can do? We were in France during the first war, Wilkie. We had worn decorations. And the white boys had told all them French gals that we had tails. Then they found this ignorant colored soldier, paid him to tie a tail to his ass and run around naked making monkey sounds. They put him on this big round table at the cafe in Napoleon. They put a reed in his hand, a crown on his head, and a blanket on his shoulder and made him eat bananas in front of all them Frenchies. And all the white boys laughed that night, printed out leaflets with that boy's pitch on it, called him Moonshine. King of the monkeys. And when we slit his throat, you know that fool had the nerve to ask us what he had done wrong? <laughs> My daddy told him we got to turn our backs on this kind of boy. We got to close our ranks to the chickens, the cock green, the cornbread style, because we are men, soldiers. And I don't intend to have our race cheated out of this place of honor and respect in this war because of fools like CJ. Now you watch everything he does. Everything. I watched him. Waters, he just couldn't wait. It was CJ this and CJ that. Everything CJ. Why not Peterson? I mean, they fought. Yeah, Waters and Peters, they fought a lot, but Sarge, he liked Peterson. Peterson fought back and he respected that. He promoted Pete. Thought Peterson would make a fine soldier. Imagine that. What was Peterson's reaction the night CJ this the night CJ died? Sad like everybody else. He put together that protest that broke up the team. After that, he ain't say much, and he usually run off at the mop. That he just kept to the boy, kept to himself, uh, to the boy small. What time did you get in the night Sergeant Waters died? Came in about 9.30, played checkers, listened to the radio, and then I went to bed. Captain, I'm sorry for what I've done, but, but it wasn't my fault. You promised me that I'd get my stripes back. 
placing you under arrest, Brian. Captain! Captain! Did you hear our orders? Came all the way down from Washington. Finally gonna let us Negroes fight. Ha <laughs> ha! The axes don't stand a chance. So all right, so we had to suck one in about six months. Shoot, that's what Joe and Lewis did to them folks. Did you hear me? 40 hours, stand by alert. We going into combat. <laughs> Look out, hell of the niggas coming to get your ass through the fall. <laughs> Look, they really gonna let us fight the real right. So Man, really they okay. tell me the women in England is woo! What they, what they looking like? Ooh. They gonna oh. let us get in it! Come on! <laughs> we may lay so much smoke, the Germans don't know what a colored soldier looks like till the war is over. <laughs> I just wrote one girl the other day, said we gotta be going oh, soon. Man, man, you ain't nothing. They said we was getting discharged. You say you wrote that too. Oh, whatever. You hit it home, sir. Corporal Ellis, score Private Wilkie to the stockade. Yes, sir. Wilkie under arrest? How come? I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Father, your two men seen Smalls or Peterson? Uh, I saw your man taking Smalls to the stockade, sir. When? On my way over here. Two MPs are taking him through the gate. Tin Hut! As you were. By the way, congratulations, <coughs> man. <laughs> Look out, Helen! We come to get your ass! Through the phone! Why'd you go AWOL, soldier? Private Anthony Small, sir. At ease. Answer my question. Uh, I didn't go AWOL, sir. I got drunk and tiny enough. I fell asleep in a bus depot. Yeah, that was the only public place I could find to sleep at all. Where'd you get drunk? Where in time? Jake's. Jake's and Lily's Golden Slipper. On Melville Street. Weren't you and Peterson on detail together? Where was Peterson? I don't know, sir. You're lying. You mean to tell me you walked off a detail and Peterson said nothing? No, sir. He warned me, sir. Listen, Smalls, he said, if you're going to- You trying to make a fool of me, Smalls? No, sir. Huh? No. The two of you went A-W-O-L together, didn't you? Answer me! Yes. You left. Because Peterson knew I'd find out you killed Sergeant Waters. What? I can't hear you. Did you kill Sergeant Waters? I want an answer. I can't sleep, sir. I just can't sleep. Did you kill Sergeant Waters? It wasn't me. It was Peterson. I watched it. But it wasn't me. We were changing the guard. You can't be trusted. No matter what we do, there are no guarantees. And your mind just won't let you forget it. On our way to the captain's office, and Sarge was just in the road. He was ranting, talking crazy, sir. Hey, look who was drunk on his ass, boy. So Peterson to forget about Waters. No, Smalls. I'm going to enjoy this. Big, bad Sergeant Waters down on his knees. Hey, Sarge, can I give you a hand? That's how I help you. You know what? Oh, I'm sorry, son. Let, 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 let me help you again. All right, come on. There you go. Just like that. You dog. Peterson. No, man. If, if, if this was Hitler, would you kill him? If it was Tojo or a German, would you kill him? There's a trick to it, Peterson. It's the only way you can win. See, Jacob never make it. He was a clown. A clouded black face. <laughs> a nigga. <laughs> you got to be like them. <laughs> and I was. I was, but the rules are fixed. Shh, shh, shh. Listen. <laughs> it's CJ. <laughs> I made him do it. <laughs> but it don't make any difference because they still hate you. <laughs> they still hate you. <laughs> you know what, Justice Small? That isn't justice. For CJ, everybody. You call that justice? No, sir. Well, why the hell didn't you do something about it? I'm scared of Peterson, sir. I, I'm just scared of him. I tried to get him to go, but he wanted to drag Sarge's body off into the woods. He said people think white folks did. What happened next? I got sick, sir. Peterson got done. He held me back to the barracks. Told me to 
keep my mouth quiet. Sorry, sir. Sir? Peterson was apprehended the next week in Alabama. Colonel Nivens called it just another black mess of cutting, slashing, and shooting. He was delighted that no white officers were mixed up in it. And in his report to Washington, he summarized the events around Sergeant Waters' death as the usual and common violence any commander faces in Negro military units. It's just the kind of mess that ends up on the page three of the colored newspaper, the type of thing we Negroes can't quite read in comfort, the Cain and Abe story of the week. For me, well, two colored soldiers are dead and two more on their way to prison. Four less men to fight with. And none of their reasons, nothing anyone said or did would have been worth a life to men with larger hearts, men less split by the madness of racism in America. The case got very little attention and I was quickly and unceremoniously shipped back to my MP unit. <laughs> a style of guitar picking and a dance called the CJ caught on in tiny saloons in 1945. Mm -hmm. In northern New Jersey, through a military foul up, Sergeant Waters' family was informed that he was killed in action. Therefore, the sergeant was unofficially rumored to be the first colored casualty of the county and declared a hero. <laughs> Nothing could be done officially, of course, but his picture was hung on the wall of honor in the Dory Miller VFW post, number 978. The men of the 221st Chemical Smoke Generating Company, the entire outfit, officers and enlisted was wiped out in the German in the Ruhr Valley during the German advance. <clears throat> Captain? Davenport? See so you got your man. I got him, Captain. Will you accept my saying uh, you did a splendid job? I'll take the praise. Not my manager. Davenport, I, I didn't come here to get made fun of. The men, the regiment, we all ship out for Europe tomorrow, and uh, I was wrong, Davenport, about the bars, the uniform, about Negroes being in charge. I guess I'll have to get used to it. Oh, you'll get used to it. <laughs> Bet your ass on that. <laughs> you'll get used to it. Dante Sogero playing Captain Wilcox. <laughs> Chester Green playing the role of Private Anthony Smalls. Yeah. Darrell Crockett playing the role of Sergeant Waters. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Birch playing the role of Lieutenant Bird. <laughs> Brandon Hearn, Lewis Hansen. Yes, Rodney Rebels Jr. playing Corporal Cobb. Luke May, Captain Taylor. Vincent White, Captain Richard Davenport. Jonathan Moore, James Wilkie. Ryan Robinson, Corporal Ellis. Dwayne Coleman, I played the part of CJ Memphis. Yeah. <laughs>